Here comes the nasty girl. Send a priest to save my soul. Forget it. Welcome back to the Nasty Graham RPG podcast. That was Pale Blue Dot. My name is John, and I was your handler. Hey, this is Jake, and I was we. Hi, this is Ryan, and I was we. <laughs> Hey, this is Devin, and I was we. Hey, this is Matt, and I was the savior. <laughs> so we just wrapped up uh, the the last episode of of uh, Pale Blue Dot. First question, <laughs> jumping right in. What did you guys think of the twist? I thought it was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I think I can enjoy it more when. It was all. It was already like a bad situation. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, you know we get the twist that makes it even more horrible. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it makes me think differently about other th- like the the horrible stuff that we saw first. Yeah. Wasn't so horrible <laughs> now that we figured out what this more horrible thing was. We'll get, I'll get to that later. Yeah. 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 Um, but it was fun. We just got to be along for the ride. My character lost some sanity, so I could <laughs> act a little. You know, we could all act a little crazy. Um, that was awesome. That was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Um, I, th- I said to you, John, in a, in a message, uh, cause obviously I, I knew about it yeah. before everyone else. Um, cause you had to give me a lot of background. I, I, a ton to, of information. To Jesus. Um, but I, I said at one point, I was like, this is going to be like playing werewolf, like yeah. the, the, um, <laughs> or, um, what? what's the other version of blood, werewolf? The, blood in the clock tower, blood or, the clock tower or, or mafia, 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 you know, like one of those like uh deception games. I was like, I love those fucking <laughs> games. I'm all in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you should have seen the uh, information that I sent to Jake. Huge info dumps. Wow. It was a Dan document. <laughs> it was Dan definitely a Dan document. Dan docs. <laughs> I, will, I will read out the first thing I sent to him. And I think it was... And I'll also say, like, to John's credit, he also gave me a lot of leeway to kind of like, you yeah. know, do what you want. He, I think he said at one point, he's like, you're consider yourself a co-game master at this point. Yeah, yeah, I was basically. like, all right, cool. <laughs> I said, I'll let you know what happens to your character and the story behind the game. So the alien drags your unconscious body back to the med bay and sets you up in their straying strands like the other alien, removing your helmet. You come to just as it leans over you, its head inches from yours. It opens its mouth as this brown cloud passes from it to you, overwhelming your nostrils and lungs. As the last of the cloud leaves the alien, it slowly topples over, apparently dead, the tongue lolling out of its mouth. That's the text I sent him. What happened to his character? Cool. <laughs> so I didn't really Sweet. kill it. I really wanted one of you to be like, what happened to the alien? And I was just going to be like, United States Space Force. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> We're trained to kill aliens. <laughs> so you guys have any questions for me? Uh, yeah, I have one. <laughs> okay. The, the spiders. Yeah. Those creatures. Yeah. Were they kind of like good guys or space travelers to space travelers okay yep and so this brown cloud which yep. i believe is is this is the brown cloud the shake no okay the shake of the, the, the spiders yep this brown cloud uh also hitched a ride mm-hmm. uh was using the uh spiders uh and it essentially consumes its host yep and then it moves on to another one I'll say I was looking for an opportunity to do some exposition near the yeah, end yeah, 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 <laughs> and, yeah, and to kind it. of explain that part, but yeah. it just never, it, because of the way it went, it just never happened. I, I did a little bit of quasi exposition when me and I, the me and Devin time. Um, but yeah, the, the shake used this, this warp travel and it rips space time and goes into alternate dimensions. And one of the dimensions that went into was a dimension that was consumed by a hive mind bacteria and part of that hive mind hitched a ride on its way back into our dimension. And it was, it, it began dumb because it didn't have enough material to process thought in a high, high level. And as it, as it kind of went into that fight or flight mode, it, it fed on organic material, took over one of the shake and then started to learn how to think again. And as it got bigger and bigger, it became more and more sentient until it, it, it took over everyone and, was able to reproduce. Yeah. I, I had, um, so I, John had already told me all that. And, um, I was, I kind of had this vision of this scene where like I got Devin, your character kind of cornered and I was going to be like, and I was going to kind of 
tell you that and, and be like, you know, I know, <laughs> or, um, like no one knows that Arthur would have wanted to know this before he died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, that sort of thing. He did. He ended up finding out on his own. <laughs> yep. All right. Right. Which was great. And then being like, but it's okay because you're all going to be part of us. <laughs> yep. That was fun. That was a very liberating moment. Yeah. Sort of towards the end. I didn't have to be afraid anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I was, you know, we are the apex predator here. There's yep. no danger to us. Yep. And we are in control. Yeah. I, I, I was worried that, um, well, worried number one that it was going to be way too convoluted in my own mind, and I was, uh, and you guys wouldn't get the the real threat. And I was worried that I hadn't presented that soon enough, especially for the short arc that this was. So um, I don't know. Did you feel like it was you had enough time to discover that and and kind of learn through all of the the or get that mystery of like what really is the threat? And then I think at the very least, what we got, we we. Be, you know, because of the scene of the shock being like taken at the end, yeah, uh, we got the idea that like they that it's two separate things, yeah, that it's a you know that there's essentially three teams, here. yeah, like yeah. there's us, there's the shock, and then there's the the, um, the hive mind, hive mind. So I I I'm like like the details of like you know oh they picked them up accidentally, yeah. like you know that was kind of lost Infer, unfortunately, yeah. but like but we got the general like idea of of all of it. I think came across, yeah. I think my character, like it's, I, we talked about this before recording one time we were to dinner and that uh, the s best horror, I think there's that moment of revelation when the characters find out what's going on, mm -hmm. it's already too late. Yeah. And that moment when, uh, after Arthur took a bite of the fruit and his mask was off and then the cloud like, yeah. you know, approached him. That's when I think he realized what that's was going true, yeah. on. Um, and yeah, that whole know. thing was you taking your mask off. They were like, "Oh, now it's time <laughs> to take yep. you over because yep. you let you left yourself vulnerable." Because yeah, the the suits themselves are hermetically sealed, so they couldn't get in. Um, but yeah, yeah, I liked how I liked how that end unfolded. I mean, yeah. it was kind of unpredictable. We yeah. didn't know which way it was yeah, going to yeah, go. Yeah. But that was cool. That was good. We didn't know if if uh, Victor was going to make it out. Yeah, Matt, I have a question for Matt. Yeah, did, so what did you think <laughs> was go like when? Did you think that um, that Devin's character was actually trying to like you know do some sort of espionage, or did you did you have a good feeling like out of character that like I was part of the the like being controlled or something like? Well, I think I think as soon as um, as soon as Noah's suit is like damaged, Noah was I mean uh, Victor was already like. There's like there has to be something else here, and then I think it was it was after we'd gotten you, um, and you said you said run like Victor was already suspicious of like you at that point. Nobody else ran, and when he got to that room and he saw that thing pulsing, I think that's when he realized that there was something else going on that he didn't fully understand. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he was on his guard from everybody. Yeah. And the other thing, like, I was, <laughs> like, my thought process was I didn't want you guys to wake up any more of them because they weren't infected. Yeah, they were going to The ones that are it. in the pods, like, the, the pods are hermetically sealed. Like, they were, they were, you know, they would have been on your team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I didn't want you to wake them up. So that's why I was like, we have to get away from these things. Yeah. That, so the, the first um, dead one that you find in the med bay was the first infected one that was killed by the other check. And then they were trying to figure out what was wrong with it until that, because there was a skeleton crew that was, that was commanding the ship, which was the two check that you had met and it killed the other one and tried to figure out what was going on. Couldn't figure it out and then became infected itself. But I, I liked how you played it. I mean, I liked, you, you know, you were equally kind of suspicious of both of us. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I yeah. think, uh, you know, I said it, I said it off mic when, when uh, John and Devin were having their little secret session, I said it to Ryan. I was like, I think, you know, Victor, Victor remembered an old, old movie from the 1900s uh, called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where it was safer to fit in with the loonies than actually try to like, <laughs> oh, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. like yep. fix them or like, no, th things are going wrong is he was more like survival mode of, okay, like, Everybody here is crazy, so 
He's not going to rock the boat as much as he can. He's just going to try to observe and get um, as much info as he could. Knowing that both uh, Noah and Arthur's suits had been opened up, uh, immediately he wasn't trusting anything either you said. And then as soon as the two stories didn't line up, about one not remembering, the other remembering, was like, all right, well, this is... He, like I, he was like I'm I'm fucked. Like I think that's part of the the nasty gram that I sent to to John at that point was my little paragraph yeah. of like, okay, well, <laughs> shit's fucked. I gotta figure it out. Yeah. So I don't think you ever specifically said like on mic, but what was Devin's initial um, oh. message to? Yeah, so because it was, it was. Turns out it yeah. was not a communist manifesto. It was not. It was not. <laughs> it was not. Where, where'd it go? Shit. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Devin's original message was <laughs> Mayday, possible contamination aboard Utsfokers, invasive species, <laughs> which would have alarmed the would UN. Been a, it would have been a good message to get out there. <laughs> yeah, it would yeah, have been important. good to get out there. I'm just, that I'm, was important. Yeah. I'm just really disappointed for my character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Why? he was, he was, I think, I think he was really close to, to, to actually, you know, communicating. He, with, with the spiders. He spider fully pen. communicated. Yeah. He is the, oh, he with, is, with yeah. we. Yes. He's he we. Now is, now. He now is the is spider. We, well, yeah. yeah. Although, He's anything. And, um, <laughs> you can control the spider all you want. Yeah. <laughs> Assimilation I mean, is the highest yeah. form of flattery. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't that really <laughs> kind of space be, vapor now, wouldn't but. that be like the worst case for Iggy is that he isn't. The, the center a, of it all as a megalomaniac yeah, I would say he probably is not happy <laughs> like <laughs> oh, what what are some of your uh, uh, maybe favorite moments from the, uh, the 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 arc well I mean favorite as in I liked it or as in <laughs> has given me slightly more terror hey, whatever than, yeah. I mean, okay. you just you just blew up an entire spaceship of, of space spiders so <laughs> You're good to go. I, it's yeah. it's kind of like laying an M80 in a hornet's nest. I think. Uh, I mean, some uh, legitimately the the end of what was it? Episode four, where we find like I legitimately Noah, yeah. had um, like a, a nightmare later that <laughs> night of like being in empty space and seeing so somebody standing there and not responding yeah. to calls. I'm yeah. just like that one. That one stuck with me more than I really hoped it would. Yep. <laughs> I think uh, everyone's or Ignatius and um, Arthur, like their like first quote unquote contact moments when Ignatius has the dream of him and the like the spider and clacking and yeah, um, that was like that was a total mind fuck. Like that was that took that took what I had thought about the what was going on mm -hmm. uh and it just turned it upside down and yeah. opened everything up and then uh when arthur first found the bud in the orchid mm -hmm. uh so the orchid was his one of his uh, I, I had a bond actually with it <laughs> um <laughs> and it was sort of his ticket out like he did that he took it he snuck it on board called it medical equipment it was going to be his like his oh, way that's out. why it's in a medical case mm -hmm. yep that's why it's in a medical case and it was a sort of like a, a thing. It was a money thing for him. It was a, you know, prestige, uh, whatever, but it ends up being his, you know, first exposure to this alien, uh, thing. Yep. And it was something that when I started losing sanity, uh, I, I decided that that would be like a fixating point for Arthur is this little, this little bud. He has yeah. like an attachment to it. Losing sanity is it's cool in these games, especially, you know, I talked with John a little bit about, you know, what path my character was going to go down and it gives him some stuff to do, you know, when, you know, manifesting some of the insanity, like in the, in the real world or, uh, or whatever else. Um, it's cool. It's fun. Oh yeah. I mean the system, like it, it was a good system, good choice. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I know you were talking about, you, you use the sanity mechanic to sort of yeah. represent how corrupted people had been. Yep. Um, but just the sanity mechanics. So great. good. Yeah. Just, uh, I mean, it, it adds so much narrative. I mean, like so many, uh, I know like of Ryan's decisions were based <laughs> on the fact that he very quickly lost a ton yep. of sanity. Yeah. 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 I think, um, yeah. Using it for the corruption is great. The, so the, the con rolls that you made were because you were infected. And when you fail those, it's because your, your autoimmune system wasn't fighting off the, mm. the hive mind 
fast enough. So you're getting more and more corrupted that way. Shit. <laughs> How about uh, Jake or RT? Favorite moments? Ryan? I, I just think like the whole descent into, yeah, I think it's a, it's in a play out what Jake says, is as, you know, I, and kind of losing so much sanity in that, like, short, in that one game, I think I dropped like 10 points yeah, or something. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> um, so I was, yeah, I, I went from... Yeah, I went from fifty five to thirty five. Very fast. <laughs> um, a lot of fives. A lot yeah, of, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of five yeah. out of eight rolls. Yeah. And um, so yeah, I was I was almost down to a second uh, a second um, breaking point there. Yeah. Um, which I mean, really, I, I, I've hit. But. You're not you're not playing Delta Green right <laughs> if you're not losing a bunch of sanity um, and going crazy. But just yeah, to kind of really feed into the the megalomania, and then I I think the the quote religious guy taking a bite of fruit of the fruit at the end was, yeah. was pretty oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Um, I didn't even make that yeah. connection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that was my favorite part was the, the eating the fruit yeah. part at the yeah. end. Yeah. That was that good. Was, that was good. That'd be some good imagery. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. like this yeah. gross acidic fruit, yeah. like <laughs> dripping down his face. Yeah. I like how RT played the, the submit. So when you lose five sanity, mm-hmm. you, uh, you either, uh, fight, flee or submit. And yeah, when RT, like when Iggy uh, was like, you know, short of prostrating himself before yeah. this thing. And um, I, that was just a super cool way to yeah, play okay. it. Cause you know, just, you know, running away is a thing and yeah. fighting is a thing, but like just sort of, uh, you know, having this like sublime moment while this <laughs> enormous monstrous creature is coming down on us. It's, it's just awesome. Well, I mean his, yeah, his belief was that these are, this is a progenitor species. Yeah. Yep. These are the, these are <laughs> right. the ancient aliens that came to Earth. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Like created our civilization. Now, now they're coming back, to and it. they're coming back. Yeah. yeah. So that's why he was just so ready, ready yeah. for it. Yeah. How about you, John? Did you have a favorite moment or a moment you kind of didn't expect? Or <laughs> well, one of my favorite moments is the fact that you rolled a ninety nine on that dodge roll. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my god! So perfect, dude. I I said we were it talking before, about it, but- like. I because so we knew I wasn't gonna be there for the third game, mm-hmm. and so we talked about my character getting taken, um, which worked out so well. Yeah, like oh, I'm yeah. so glad I wasn't able to be here that yep. week. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it yeah, uh, but I literally was going to lie, lie about and it. Yeah. Say I rolled the ninety nine. No, he literally <laughs> rolled the ninety nine. I rolled the ninety nine, and I went, I went well. <laughs> <laughs> that's easy. Um, no, I, I like, I like, I really like the, uh, the kind of build up that you guys had of like the kind of interpersonal community, like talks that you had to build your characters. One of the things I, I think maybe I didn't do, uh, enough of, but it was a short arc. So it's really hard to hit all these points was to, to pull into your motivations. Um, and I, like Matt's motivation, I, I don't think I pulled in enough of, of that communication side. Cause I didn't really know how I was going to, how I was going to like relay that for this like spider species, yeah. you know, but, uh, it was, uh, w- kind of inspired by reading the heart RPG where that that's about descending into some dungeon. That's kind of trying to give you what you want, but in, in a bad way. So the whole idea was that this, this creature, this hive mind was trying to show you that what you wanted was to get this, whatever it was to earth. Uh, and it was going to string you along with those, those promises. So using those motivations, I was really trying to, but it was kind of difficult with, the short period of time. Is that why um, Arthur? Yeah. Is that why Arthur was thinking like, oh, it's this amazing super fruit? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Was that the corruption of like, yeah, yeah. you know, this of is going to solve yeah. world hunger and everything. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I and, and the fact like showing him that plant in his room yep. was, was meant to be like, this is a, uh, an exobiology discovery of, of the ages. And will it'll probably make you a, shit ton of money, pay off your debts, whatever. And just showing the the alien was showing the hive mind was showing that to him in his room and then cool. led him into the greenhouse where he saw the rest of it. Sick. I mean Iggy's was pretty easy to to kind of with the with the dream sequence and all that, that was the the hive mind trying to give him tell him to bring it all back to earth. Um <laughs> and to spread the spread the brown love to everyone. <laughs> I can get behind that. <laughs> yeah. Play the brown note on your stringed instrument. <laughs> Should we talk about um, uh, uh, player versus player? Yeah, Something so we don't do very often. We, we don't do really uh, almost ever. And um, yeah, I, I had prefaced this game with saying that there was gonna there was gonna be a point where player versus player combat was gonna probably happen or, or may happen. And um, 
yeah, I, I think it ended up pretty well at the end. It was only a little bit. Realistically, this game didn't have very much combat at all. No. Um, which I hope doesn't sound boring to everybody. <laughs> um, and, and, and I mean, Delta Green in general doesn't have combat. No. It has violence. Because it's so deadly. It has short scenes of violence. Mm-hmm. And then that's yeah, over. That's I a didn't good lose, way to describe it. Yeah. I didn't lose any hit points. Mm-hmm. My body wasn't damaged. Yeah, just but your mind. it's mm-hmm. your mind. It's your mind. The only one who lost hit points was RT. I'm down. To, yeah, down two hit points. Two hit points and <laughs> for, from spinning at like concentrically around the ring and then hitting yep. the ring and then yep. only taking one hit point yep. and then once only taking one from the laser. <laughs> How many hit points do you have? Uh, tw- I start. I start with twelve. I have 12. ten. Yeah, so that I mean, ten. if the rolls had gone differently, oh, yeah, the, those yeah. two things could yeah. have killed you. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Victor probably took some hit points at the end with. The, yeah, um, I think yeah, a couple. Uh, maybe a few. Couple. Was it D? It was D six and D eight, right? Yeah, I think I, had, yeah. Yeah. I think that the reason the PvP worked is because it, in a way, it wasn't actually PvP yeah. because, like, you all were because helping the story I mean, like, move along. Right by the time it. <laughs> it was like, all right, we're not playing our characters anymore. Yeah. We're now uh, kind of essentially NPCs, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's why, cause like, you know, I, I, I kind of wanted to lose at the yeah. end, you yeah, know? No, but yeah. I wanted to make a cool story. <laughs> yeah. And the rules, I mean, it's very simple. Each player rolls, um, you, you resolve the role. Um, and then, you know, that, that, uh, informs the fiction. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, the, call it combat or these the scenarios initiative scenarios where we're measuring things in moments you don't get bogged down in a bunch of rules like the yeah. the scenes you know they flow in this you know more narrative game yeah i think the the real key to like having a game with pvp is just to that it isn't about like ego it's not about i want my character to yeah. win it's yeah. about like i want to tell a cool story yeah. you know yep yeah, I, I and and I think it oh, almost always should be prefaced ahead of time with with the players, and they should be in somewhat of agreement that that's going to happen, or at least know that's a possibility. Because if mm-hmm. I had sprung it all out on you that you know Jake was going to be a traitor, and then you're going to fight him, and like, and I didn't preface that that there might be PvP, maybe there would be like, oh, Jake's character kills, you know, Matt's character, and maybe there's some some you know whatever uh, animosity there. But um, yeah, I, I think in general you should just. It should always be an agreement that, that that might be a possibility. Yeah. And that I think that adds more tension just from the beginning yeah. where like, we're told. PvP, what are you talking about? Yeah, we're told <laughs> that there's going to be PvP. And then we all come in and um, Jake's character, Major Hayes, is the only one with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's the only yeah. one with firearm skills. Mm-hmm. And we are, you know, a bunch of scientists and whatever. And we don't have weapons. So yeah. that, you know, threat of, you know, if something happens you know, Noah's the only one who can defend himself. But yeah. what, what if, what if Noah's something happens guy. to Noah? Yeah, yeah. What if Noah's the bad guy? Yeah. It instantly, you know, that whole time power like trips. Yep. yep. Yeah. I, I think, uh, it, it worked out. It's tough because, you know, you, you kind of want to be good at everything in Delta green, or at least have a team that's good at everything. And, to some extent, you guys are probably the worst people to send on a ship. The worst. All right. 100%. But, and, I mean, what makes a good horror movie is mm-hmm, people who are mm-hmm, out of their element, yeah. not able to do the things that are necessary. In a, in a funny... I mean, but also, like, they didn't... The people who sent us didn't have any idea of what the threat was. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. um, at one point, I was thinking about... Um, if you guys have seen Prometheus. Yeah. Like, yep. they send this, like, team to this planet where yeah. there's, like, been an alien attack. And I'm like, they sent the dumbest people in the fucking universe like why did they 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 are this multi gazillion dollar company and they send like these like the idiot squad yeah but like i think that it it makes a little more sense because the scientific mission and yeah yeah. and and to be honest like it's no one's thinking like oh there's gonna be aliens out there you know and i think in the first episode i was at like my character like i i was trying to get across the fact that like my character didn't think this was like a yep. serious thing. Uh, like they someone, they sent, someone fuck. thought there were going to be aliens there. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, they sent Ignatius. Like this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a big deal. Yeah. It was this, it was low budget, you know, contracted from the UN to yep. some private company. Yeah. Um, obviously not important. And, you know, they got, you know, uh, they got old, a couple of old guys and a, <laughs> some and retirees. A, yeah. yeah. And, and the babysitter. A, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, two geezers, the fail son, and the babysitter. Yeah. 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 Uh, I thought the pacing was really good. Yeah. 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 Yep. Good. Um, like the re- the reveals were good. Yeah. It was cool. I right. think it's tough. Uh, you know, when we played, when it, we did the Ithaca project, 
we had all of Ithaca, New York. We had all these locations and, you know, the, the campus and, uh, you know, Dr. Zwicky's house and all this stuff. And in this game, we, we really had, we had the ship and then we had to go out and explore the asteroid and stuff. So we didn't have this big sprawling place that we could go and examine and stuff and, and explore. But I think John, you did a good job. We have this, we have this confined space, but I feel like, you know, the, the bridge has its own sort of, you know, feeling now the scenes that we had on the bridge, Mm -hmm. the scenes that we had in, you know, med bay, you know, the airlock is a, is its own thing and like giving life to these, you know, five, six locations total yeah. that we used for the the entire story. And there's mystery and investigation and subterfuge. Yeah, and when, when Amazon Prime picks it up, it's going to be a pretty <laughs> low budget <laughs> yeah. 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 set Easy. design. Um, I had I had a question, John. So we, yeah. we had, there was another um, door in the incubator chamber that oh, we, yeah, that we yeah. never opened. Door in, um, the, uh, in the So we, yeah, there was the obvious, the way we came in oh. with all the pods. The oh, pod yeah, yeah. That was to the ring. That was to the ring? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Big red self. So we could, it would have gone yeah. right out. We, we could have <laughs> gone right out. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's to the like the the exterior walkway of the, of the ring. So you would have seen this like yeah. red light shooting past as you walked in, Ooh. like uh, like the inside of a hydrant club. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Zooming by. Um, Sick. Do you guys want to know what was in the messages that were that was destroyed? Yeah. That you cut yeah, off, yeah. To Kai. Mm-hmm. So originally he had sent uh, a readings from a mass spec. Spectrometry, spectrometry, spectrometer, spectrometer. Yeah, as a spectrum answer, he sent information <laughs> about that fiber. Um, and the one that Ignatius forwarded was to uh, Cal Berkeley, MIT, uh, Lunar Command, and a location in and they could use Antarctica. That, they could use that fiber to make bridges that yeah. don't fall they, down. I, they they probably will. Uh, but the stuff that he uh, was sending at the end was information on the. Uh, species the or the the goo the b- blood the yeah. uh, ichor from the creature and then um, all of the photographs and analysis of the rings themselves mm-hmm. uh, he was sending those to those same uh, those same locations yes. so so my sort of um, my guess of like you, your goal was send out as much information as possible and then and then make sure we we don't yes contaminate the earth yep. yeah do a little science in between for himself. <laughs> Send out some info <laughs> and then self-destruct. Yep. <laughs> yep. Nice. And then once Arthur became we, I, um, everything changed. I'll, I'll tell you what, I didn't expect you to go in there and take your helmet off and eat the fruit. Yeah, I mean, didn't neither. expect yeah. it, but it was cool because it sort of set off a, a cool the chain, chain reaction. Yeah. And I and I like how, how the whole thing wrapped up with you eating the fruit and then yeah. yep. Ryan yeah. eating the fruit. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, it, I, think I was, was first. The... I was first to do it. I don't care what anyone said. <laughs> you, we, yes, we were. Yes, we yeah. were. <laughs> we were always first. We were always here. Yeah, I think that was the madness of the little scene with the doctor and uh, Kai showing uh, Victor the the fruit. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um. I I had said to John. Um. I was like, yeah. I totally expected and the first time you guys went there that um Ryan's character was going to eat the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish it tasted it, right? better. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. I wish yeah, it tasted had better. Had you failed that sanity, you would have tasted good because yep. you would have been oh, thinking God. that it was sustenance. But oh my God. Pass. His fucking just keeps eating it and his yeah. face is melting. melting off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we find yeah. him in his like whole lower jaws. <laughs> oh, <gone. God. laughs> yeah, I definitely going into the last episode, I definitely thought it was going to be a two V two situation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. the plan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it became a one V three and well, <laughs> Victor, Victor, Victor pulled it off. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. To a, thanks to a low sanity score. It became a three V one. Some big dice rolls though. Like we, you know, we talk about, uh, we talked about before, you know, wanting, the PVP stuff to sort of yeah. play out, but it was fun. Cause we were all rolling to, you know, doing what we would do. Yeah. Um, and we're, everyone's rooting for Matt. <laughs> right, like, right, everyone's yeah. rooting for Matt to will. And he was, you know, we had some awesome roles. Yeah, I was, I was going to let it roll out. And if you catch him and kill him, then, then yeah, it enters earth. And then yep. we, we, the other one. The so earth. the other ending I had in mind was that you guys were going to let the UN ship approach and then get on board, assimilate it. Yeah. And then there was, uh, it, it, as the air stabilizes, the door opens, revealing three Space Force personnel carrying medical and ship repair equipment. They all salute as Major Hay, Noah Hayes greets them. Welcome aboard the US Fucker. We're glad someone heard the call. <laughs> and that would be the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, you guys, uh, 
kicked off a great little series of events. And I was, man, the idea of the fucking asteroid landing on, on Earth and <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. If, uh, <clears throat> if Victor didn't make it off, you know, when he was first assimilated, when I first heard uh, we speak, um, that's, I was like, I'm going to get in a pod and we're going to just going to go to Earth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, your last one was that he just keeps can, can, continues jetting off into space. Yeah, that makes sense. Nice one, John. Yeah, well, uh, well, very well done. Thank you, thank you, thanks for playing. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get on to some uh, listener questions now. But first off, uh, Jake has to leave, so let's all say bye, Jake. Bye, bye, Jake. Live long and prosper. Bye, there, Jake. He, he is okay. He's evaporating to a brown dust. That's unusual. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, oh my God! No. Oh, well, we better hurry up before we all become we. We're we're just here to answer questions. Yeah, we're here to answer questions, and, you, and all the questions you guys have. Yeah, great. Um, so the the first uh, group of questions comes from Andrew, our friend from the This Is Not Happening podcast. Uh, also ran a game for us last night, which was kind of exciting. Uh, hopefully you all get to hear that uh, sometime soon. It was a wacky time. Um, but yeah, he says, uh, congrats on getting through the arc. Complex, thought-provoking sci-fi gaming is definitely my cup of tea. He asks, were there any moments where the story arc you envisioned changed to fit a cool new narrative developed through the gameplay? Or was it pretty much as you imagined it start to finish? Um, for me, for the GM, uh, it was uh, it was pretty much as I imagined it start to finish. It, the only thing that would have changed is who failed more sanity checks would have been the people who became more and more infected. I mean, okay. yeah, because like had Victor or or um, Arthur started to uh, lose sanity faster than Iggy, I would have probably leaned more on them uh, and their desires for what was going on and, and kind of pull them into the into the hive mind as opposed to Iggy and then Arthur and then uh, Victor obviously uh, resisted. Escaped it all. He escaped it all. In a way. I'm sure it went exactly how you guys thought it was going to go, right? Totally. No, I, I mean, we saw it come in episode one, probably <laughs> two. Uh, no, I, there was uh, a lot of turns for me narratively when um, I'm like, all right, maybe this is, maybe this is, is this type of thing, or maybe this means this. And then it just turned right away. Um, so the, that's, that I enjoyed this arc very much because it was very unpredictable and horrible um <laughs> you know the when we activated the device and we went on that little uh that little jaunt yep um losing power in the ship it's sort of like a you know it's a classic sci-fi trope but it really changed you yeah. know how we approached you right, know right. the the immediate things that we were working on you know um yeah and the only thing i would say is like the 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 bits of arc that had changed was mostly like smaller decisions you guys made about what you, how it was affecting you. Like when Arthur just kind of gave up hope and went back to the ship, I was like, okay, great. That, that'll set, that sets me up perfectly. And you didn't really know that. Or maybe you knew that at the time, but um, yeah. Uh, like those moments where you kind of made a decision for your character and uh, it kind of helped me drive the, the, the narrative along. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think I was just as confused and terrified as uh, Victor was throughout the whole whole article. <laughs> That's just good role playing. Uh, yeah, just yeah, it was not role playing. That was just me. <laughs> um, I think I, I, I put Eggie's cards on the table very early on the first of many uh, failed sanity rolls. Yeah, um, when it was uh, it was a fight flight or submit, and I was like, I just, it, yep. you, you submit all the oh, way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, they're like the illusion, and then the illusions of grandeur and the dream and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, that's I think the one of the best parts about playing Delta Green is having a character that um, you know has that sanity loss, and if it happens early, you can you know you can start you know just let the inhibitions go and just start you know doing some like cr crazy stuff with yeah. your character because they're you know they're beginning to go crazy. And the great thing is for the GM or for the um, handler, you can. Uh when they start to lose sanity, you can use that. You're like, ah, oh, I can use them as a vehicle for some of the, uh, some of the mystery and like things to latch onto and, and start to, to like learn about. Yeah, or a little nasty gram. And then, you know, if they say something, it's as players, we know that, okay, this character is losing sanity. Yeah. Um, you know, do, do, does my character believe them? Do I, as a player believe right. anything that, that they're saying or doing right now? Yeah. I thought I, I thought I played this well. I, I would, 
you know, meted into a therapist on a mission with a bunch of like yep. mild, and it just everything went bad so fast. Yeah, it yeah. was <laughs> losing Hayes right at the beginning. Like that was a thing for Victor of yep. like, well, okay, now I have to try to just keep it together because. <laughs> The Victor's most capable person. <laughs> terrified because the man who can fly the ship and get us out of here is gone. Yep. And I'm left with a broken doctor and a broken human. Yep. And like, I have to like, holy fuck, I don't know what's going on anymore. I ain't getting paid enough of this shit. Yeah. The, uh, another question that he had, which is pretty simple to answer. What would happen if the alien ship wasn't intercepted by the players? That was going to happen no matter what. Um, that was the mystery. Uh, it would have been a pretty boring game if you guys just flew off into space and said, where's the where's the ship? We went the wrong way. We missed way. it. <laughs> <laughs> just go home. All right. But last question from Andrew. Would a nuclear missile be enough to destroy the alien ship? And that's a good question. Nuclear, it dep- I mean, I guess so. But, like, the thing about nukes in space is that they don't have air resistance to, like, uh, build up pressure against. So the pressure wave doesn't really happen as much, I think, on uh, in atmosphere. So. Yeah, I think probably would have been would the would the missile have been able to break through the rock the crust? Yeah, because yeah. it was a lead crust, so you, it was it was a heavy yeah. metal crust. You need a yeah. crack mining team. To, yeah, to oh, get yeah. It. you would need a crack mining. Yeah, team. maybe get Bruce Willis or yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you wouldn't uh, want astronauts. For no, that no, 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 no. Uh, so, they don't understand Michael mining. Clark Duncan. Of course not. It's easy to train an astronaut. <laughs> I think Steve Buscemi is up there for some reason. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Bing Rams. Bing Rams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always got to remember the black dude that dies. That's a, well, yeah, yeah, and I mean. At that point, like even at the point where everything was going wrong near the last two episodes, uh, the the wider UN community didn't understand the 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 issue. They didn't understand what was going on. None of the communications got out, so they wouldn't have known to that it was a danger and that they should blow it up. But yeah, I think uh, you know there was a couple endings, and and maybe one of them would have been that you somehow get power online and get and get comms, and and they send send missiles or bombs or something to I mean, destroy it. Probably should be thankful it was the UN and not the US. Yeah. Because you know, <laughs> probably would have just blown it yeah. up right yeah. off yeah. the chart. Well, show. Arthur tried to alert the uh, the, the, communist the communist government yeah. of uh, Antarctica. Yep. You know, yep. but the comms are offline, unfortunately. Next couple questions come from uh, Peter, a good friend, Peter, uh, from the uh, on uh, on Discord. What's good, Peter? What's up, Peter? Um, What's up, Peter? What's up, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Uh, first and foremost, uh, absolutely love the arc. Isolation horror is a favorite of mine, and trying to get that to land in a TTRPG can be tough. But we all knocked it out of the park. Thanks, Peter. That's uh, a good way to get your questions read online. Oh, is to yeah. just gas us up oh, before yeah. you ask the yeah, questions. Yeah. Great. On to the questions. When Noah got left behind, was there a side session with Jake to discuss what happened? Were there roles made, or was it done deal when he got got? Yeah, I kind of covered this, I think, in the wrap up. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it was interesting. It was a, 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 he like last minute, maybe a week before he's like, Oh, I can't come the week after next. You'll just have to kill me off or whatever. And I'll be out the, the session. And then I decided, you know, maybe I'll use it. Can you come the week after? Oh, maybe I'll use this. And I, I sent him like a diatribe of text about like what the story was, the entire like reveal of what was going on. So he had all that to play with when he was role playing. And that's, and I said that you were taken, I gave him that little, uh, I think I, I read it out in, in the um, wrap up. I gave him that little, um, uh, little scene where his body was consumed by the, by the hive mind. And yeah, and, and he, he was down for it and he came back and he was basically a, a second GM at that point, which is, which was awesome. And the role, he had like a critical fumble too. Um, yeah. Like yeah. the last role he yeah. made before, role. That was before role. The, the session it worked out perfectly. Yep. Yep. Was the, uh, yeah, was the alien that infested Noah already influencing the crew before they were infested? Uh, was Iggy acting strange as a manifestation of the sanity loss or was there more at play here? I was suspicious that maybe there was some kind of uh, telepathy from the aliens. So uh, they didn't know it uh, until really the end that the sanity loss wasn't really sanity. It was the fact that the, the bacteria is eating away at their brains and replacing them, but they still played it as sanity loss. So that was mostly on them. Uh, I, I try to give him some clues about what to do. And, and Iggy obviously was pretty well uh, established that he would uh, worship the aliens, to my, even if he wasn't infected. <laughs> he was a pretty unhinged dude to begin <laughs> with. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that was all basically a role-playing decision by the, by the characters, uh, by the players. Um, it's only when I did the um, dream sequence with Iggy, give a little more exposition there. And then when it took over um, uh, Arthur's mind uh, is when I gave the real exposition of what was going on. Um, but most of that was, it was that's when that's a couple times I made them roll constitution 
rolls because it was an infection. So it was their body fighting off mm. the bacteria. It wasn't really sanity loss. You also, uh, I mean, for Arthur's sake, you gave him like a little plot device in yep. the in, in the, the plant. in the plant. Yeah. Um, because you know, in the character creation, in my sort of my my background, um, was that you know he was sort of obsessed uh, with making a sign. He needed to make a scientific discovery. Um, little intro scene, you know, that he was you know in trouble with some gambling yep. and his uh, the 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 communist uh, government of Antarctica needed him to you know do something pr- do something <laughs> um so he was really fixated on making some sort of discovery he was defeated because this these missions don't usually pan out john gave threw me a little bone and uh you know i latched right onto it and that sort of became his um you know the the vehicle by which he lost his sanity is you know this obsession over yeah. this this thing and eventually when we find noah in the back in the garden you know it's sort of that's the point where he sort of tips over yeah. and yep. submits yeah and i think uh the other part is like so you two got more sanity loss. I don't think Victor, you really only lost a little bit of sanity, but you yeah. never got to a breaking point. Nope. Um, because like I mentioned in the wrap up, a lot of the, some of the ideas about what would show up as part of your sanity loss was kind of inspired by the heart where it's kind of showing you things that you want to see and trying to draw you in. And if like Victor started to lose sanity and break, it would have been like he starts to learn how to speak the language and starts to go in and like wants to go through the archives of the Czech and like because that was your that was your um, one of your um, motivations was to learn get first contact yep. learn how to communicate. Um, but I think like at a certain like even after the probably the second episode he was he was already already, already fuck this like who cares <laughs> if we could talk to him like we gotta get the fuck yeah, out of here hundred um, percent. Whereas if you had lost more sanity and broke it would have been like. Uh, you know, you can hear it talk to you or you can read some of the um, language or you feel the vibrations and it can talk to you and you can learn some stuff off of it. Oh, and that would yeah. that would have driven you into the in, same way it would have been for Arthur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was some of the inspiration for for the uh, loss of sanity mechanics there. Actually, I, that leads me to a question. Do you early on, you know, as we start playing couple, one or two sessions in as you know, as the handler, you learn more about the characters as we play them. Do you have, uh, do you sort of map out uh, sort of little points of, of how sanity loss would, would manifest, how we would get pulled into, you know, becoming we? Um, not, not really. I had a general idea of what I would, what I would show you, but I wanted to make sure like opportunities that came up within as in gameplay would then be ways for me to pull you in like the the garden or if we you stumbled upon uh their archives or like that central computer in the pod yeah, yeah, and got yeah. some more information there um naturally be able to 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 figure out ways of pulling you in because i don't want to be like strict like okay uh you know you you breaking point you have a you you see the plant or like i you know i yeah. i tried to because i don't want to be also be too um strict with that because I want to have a bit more fluidity, make sure that the story doesn't either ramp up too quickly or, or doesn't ramp up enough. Yeah. Um, whereas like the mystery isn't solved by the like sixth episode or whatever. Also like, you know, any given sanity roll, you could roll minimum one sanity yeah. loss, yeah. which doesn't, you know, it doesn't have a huge effect. Yeah. Um, but then it could be, you know, you roll a max of, of a four on a D four brings you past the breaking point when, you know, relatively uh, a small, uh, uh event like, uh, event yeah, yeah can have you know dire consequences right. um yeah uh, um, another one from peter yeah another one uh how the hell did you come up with the dream iggy had chakta chakta that was great uh, um i don't know i just uh i was like uh it was after yeah it was the episode after no it was the episode four i think i wanted to really give some sort of like hint as to what was happening in Iggy's brain and uh, what was pulling him in uh, and also give like a bit of uh, foreshadowing about the dust and, and like what that could be. Um, is it part of the alien or is it not? And then you start to see it. I don't think you, uh, and this is probably my, my fault of like not, not reinforcing some of these things of, I don't know if you made the connection of Iggy's dream and then seeing some of the dust uh, when you went back into the ship, like eat, feeding on stuff. Iggy Brown dust. Iggy Brown dust. I didn't make that connection, yeah. and I don't know that my character would have made yeah, that yeah, connection. Probably not, yeah. um, uh, and you didn't yeah. tell the scientists about it either. No. Your dream either. No. So yeah, they wouldn't. Have, yeah. They wouldn't have uh, picked up on it. Yeah, we would have thought he was crazy anyways. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, the 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 I don't know if I said this in in the wrap up, um, but one of the regrets I had was a little bit more foreshadowing of when you guys went to the other dimension of the people who were infected not hearing whispers and and stuff from the uh, hive mind, which had taken over that dimension and ver- were very strong within that dimension. So they would have like detected that Iggy was in this dimension. It would have been like trying to communicate and take him over fully. Um, I didn't do any of that. And I think that would have been a good, another good stepping point of, uh, of what, it, what the fuck's going on. Like, yeah, but yeah, Jake had a uh, similar experience when we did in our monster of the week game with yeah. the six borough Berg. Yeah. He wanted to, he was, he had this idea that, you know, there were like voices and like all these like souls that were trapped yeah, in the yeah. fatberg and you just you know you just forgot to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot happening man oh yeah. yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah it's tough too when you're uh when you're running a mystery too you you want to like be on the edge of not giving them too much exposition but then not like letting them like stumble around in the dark like for you know three episodes or whatever mm-hmm. yeah another uh so uh from tiger army on discord shout out uh, how was it, no compliment in this one? Although, did he compliment afterwards? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say what's like Tiger, Tiger Army, but I don't. Uh, he <laughs> said thanks, thanks for your awesome art. Oh, thanks bottom, yeah. thanks yeah, again okay. to Josh for Ooh. meeting us at Gen Con. Okay, you, sorry, there sorry was... you had to meet Josh. At oh, Gen I'm so Con. sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, was how to RP loss of sanity talked about beforehand or during or just left up, up to the players? That was mostly left up to the players. I gave them hints and, and guidance a little bit, but I think. Uh, you guys kind of took it and ran with it. Uh, Matt and RT, was this your first Delta Green game? No. Oh, that's right. You, yeah, you was, played uh, in Ithaca Project. That was in Ithaca. This was my first Delta Green game. Yeah. Um, I did. Cool. I did enjoy the whole um, I, the sanity loss aspect of it. Um, I think again, my character was pretty unhinged to begin with. Yeah, <laughs> um, good place to start. <laughs> so, yeah, Delta yeah. Green game. It's fun. Um, so it was pretty easy to kind of it, it. It to just really. Just go down that slope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You just did it slide. so well. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> slide on down. I think it would. Yeah, I think it would have been more difficult to play him if he didn't lose so much sanity so quickly. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You would have nothing to justify your yeah. your, your yeah. actions. <laughs> um, uh, Devin, can you get me a, a root beer or something? I'm feeling parched. It's all that dust in the air. Yeah, Jake. Damn, he's still, he's still here. Got cotton mouth like a mug. <laughs> And then, and in a world where uh, no player failed a die roll to become us, could they have had a successful mission, or were they doomed from the start, or at least a certain point like the cloud? Uh, point like the cloud. Um, we talked about this before we were recorded. Like we 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 kind of beefed a lot of our roles early yeah. on. Uh, I mean, the, there's certainly a, a world where you guys didn't lose any sanity. You learned about the um, the the bacteria. And made the decision to destroy the asteroid, uh, and and then notify um, notify command. And that certainly could have happened. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not, like I'm not gonna put everything out there in front of you, but uh, obviously, if you had asked the right questions or done the right um, biopsy, like I showed Arthur the cells in the blood, like um, re uh, um, basically eating the blood cells, and they look different than the cells that were in the blood. Um, that was a little bit of a clue as to something was like trying to consume the the alien. We were doing good science. Yeah, you were. You were. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then, well, <laughs> yeah. And then not. And then not. Yeah, and yeah, it certainly could have happened. Um, I mean, they might have been somewhat doomed because if they had been even slightly exposed to it, uh, I'm sure they would have had to have been contained, and you know, yeah, something would have had to have. Uh, a clean room, figure out how to de-infect them. But at some point their brain would be consumed and they would be uh, a hive mind. So, you know, yeah, that was the, the start. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, you know, in order to figure out what was going on, like we, we had to go deeper. We yeah. had to expose, like, you know, expose ourselves to, you know, this environment in the, in the asteroid. And eventually, you know, you put, you know, a, 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 disgorged creature yeah. in front of a bunch of scientists and, you know, they're going to yeah. poke around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I mean, and some of the best uh, Delta green games are the ones where they're basically doomed from the start. Yep. Uh, and, and, uh, and it was going to be a shorter game anyway. So that was, that was always kind of the point. Yeah. But, I th- yeah. yeah. I think the win scenario is, you know, we crack the asteroid, go in, wow, there's some giant rings in here, report that and just wait. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> yeah. 
That would have been a real fun game. Yeah. All right. But then, like, that's Let's the thing. Chess, right? <laughs> once, once you become we, then the win scenario changes. And I think yeah. in the end, we want, most of us won. Yeah, most of you guys won. We most of, most of us won. Yeah. It, was, it turned out great. Really? Yeah. Did you? Oh yeah. I made it. Yeah, I made it back to Earth. Did yeah. you? Did we? Did yeah. we roll for that? Uh, and, and, yeah, I don't feel like I didn't see any dice roll for that. <laughs> yeah. some, I feel like there's a lot way. of science in between. I had a GM on my side. He <laughs> told me. It, it, yeah. he, the the bacteria may or may not have uh, ended up on on planet Earth. He may uh, not. Victor's life may not have been forfeited. He's saying there's a chance. <laughs> uh, roll for reentry. Well, <laughs> to to some extent, the the amount of bacteria that got to Earth would have been minuscule. So it would have had to start over again the whole process. So it would have been brainless basically when it got there. So if anyone had learned about what happened, yeah. they would hopefully be able to contain it and figure it, it out. It's the perfect cinematic ending, too. Yeah. It's just uh, what happened. Just Kai kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 99.99% yeah. 99. of germs were eliminated. So you're, so you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <Tell me. laughs> yeah, that, that uh, picture you posted, in John, in, was it the Discord or? It, uh, yeah, Discord. The, of the, the, guy, the dude, that, was, falling, yeah. that was like perfect. Yeah. 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 I watched the, uh, when I saw that, I watched the uh, the Red Bull uh, re-entry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bombgar, uh, yeah. bombgar, bombgarden goes up into the upper atmosphere and jumps off of a, off of a, a like over a hundred thousand. It's incredible. Feet, yeah, the fast was it the fastest like a human as, as yeah. human has traveled. <laughs> it's crazy, unassisted. Yep. And uh, lastly, from uh, Tiger, how would the players or the GM react to being on the ship for the final mission uh, session? Uh, my thought was to get to the pod and think of Sagittarius A star or. Or, or the black hole in the middle of the, uh, the Milky Way uh, to kill the asteroid there probably would have died before getting anywhere in the air of the pod. So the only so the only reason that uh, Noah was able to move the pod was because he wasn't Noah. He was a Choctaw, and he went into the pod and controlled the ship. It wasn't because Noah had any ability to control it. So yeah, that it would have taken a a Wii to do that, and they would have done that. Uh, oh, yeah. You See? Would, yeah. I don't think that ever even crossed Victor's mind. Yeah. I don't think he would have ever been like, I'm going to like, yeah. I'm going to steer the ship. Right. Like that no. would never. Yeah. Um, yeah. And at that point you didn't trust what Noah was saying anyway. So like he said, Oh, I, I just figured out how to do it. And you're like, yeah. mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, no, just, we're fine. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the other scenario would have been, you wake up another of the Choctaw and try to communicate with them and then try to get them to steer the ship. But that would have been uh because uh, I, I I actually hadn't really thought about how they would react uh, to a, a normal chalk tie, a non-infected one, because the one that you met was fully infected. It wasn't uh, at all uh, a chalk tie. And I'm, I'm, you know, they're spacefaring race. I mean, they probably would have been somewhat sentient, like logical and sentient and um, maybe maybe had been taken aback or thought you guys were, were attacking. But I don't know. It would have been interesting. Uh, good, good questions. Tiger yeah, Army. yeah, great questions. Um, Sir Tom uh, or Sir Tom from uh, from Discord to the GM. Did any of the actions uh, taken by the players catch you by surprise? Uh, did the game run according to plan? Uh, was there any scenario you envisioned where the players could win and make it out alive? Finally, what did you make uh, of humanity's chances if the hungry hive mind survives for entry and make it to Earth? Take me by surprise. Uh, well, it was it was not surprising because it's Jake, but the amount that he really helped me like storytell in the end was was really helpful. Um, and some of the decisions he made were things that he had come up with and made on his own and kind of moved the story forward. Like I said, Arthur going back to the the kind of giving up hope and going back to to do his last bit of science before uh, everything is gone um, was was pretty good. He's doing my duty, you know. Yeah. Good communist. Uh, yeah, good, good communist. communist <laughs> good comrade. For the us. Yeah, yeah for the us. <laughs> yeah, in Iggy doing, yeah, yeah. Uh, the fact that you were like submitting so much, like right right off the bat. I guess it wasn't really surprising, but it was it was also really, really great for you to uh, to push that forward. But yeah, it basically ran according to plan. Mm, I think we already kind of touched on this, but uh, I don't think the players would ever have made it out alive, but they could have won by not, uh, by destroying the asteroid before it got anywhere close to Earth, although the hive uh, could survive in space, but you know, you guys didn't know that. Um, Balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, chances for humanity. Uh, I don't know. Um, it depends on where it lands. Yeah, yeah. If it lands somewhere remote 
And I kind of talked to my wife about this because she had listened and uh, she was like, oh, wouldn't it be kind of cool where it like lands in like South America in the Amazon and there's like stories about shit happening and they send a team in to go figure out what's going on. And you guys play the team that goes in and that would be so cool. That's another cool. great Delta Green game. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a perfect Delta Green game. Um, so maybe we'll see. We'll, we'll put that in my back pocket. But yeah, I don't I don't think uh, I think it would have uh, caused a major catastrophe on, on Earth uh, at some point. If it landed in a populous center, maybe it would have been contained. I'd say but, mathematically, though, it would land in the ocean. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like. But there's plenty of stuff to eat in the Same. ocean. <laughs> yeah. True. Ooh. Sharks. That goes back to the monster of the week. There's tainted tuna. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> top of the food chain. Yep. That, that, that tuna is a hive mind. The emperor shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh, and then uh, to the players, when playing in a setting like this, how much do you allow yourselves to be influenced by classics like Alien and The Thing? Do you try and uh, put them completely from your mind? Or are there occasions where you think it's fun for my character to take this action because it fits with the genre? Uh, I think for me, it, it would be subconscious. I don't think I actively think about it, but I mean, I've spent the last 30 years like absorbing yeah. those things. So I think probably a lot of it bleeds into it. But I mean, some of those are just, they're classics and it's the perfect it's, yeah. it's the perfect choice right. to make in that situation. To make it it's interesting. Like, yeah, yeah, like there isn't, it doesn't feel like there's another way to go sometimes. Yeah, I I, I feel like to answer the question directly, uh, there it's there's, I don't think there's a way to not be influenced by those things. You know, when you, when we have these situations, when you, there was so many times where John described something and I could just envision in my head, you know, a, a, a scene from Alien or, um, you know, any or the expanse, mm -hmm. like in like imagining like a, a scenario. It doesn't have to be the same, but something similar, you know, it's the, you know, the moment of revelation or, you know, first contact and things like that. It's like those things are just like in your mind and, they, you know, they turn on like a like a switch yeah. and you can't not be influenced by those things because there's a lot of great stuff like horror sci-fi is something that you know i know john likes a lot mm -hmm. i like a lot um matt and rt you know from playing the game you know you can just sort of tell that we were all sort of vibing with with some of these like nasty horrible things um and you know just being able to play into it and you know maybe even you know recreate you know, something like we've seen in, you know, in, in movies mm -hmm. and television, all that stuff. It's fun. Um, and it's fun to be able to do that because we have this, you know, common understanding of, of the genre. I think, I think it was episode three where my uh, tag at the start was that he's in aliens, but thinks he's in contact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. And that was pretty much how I played it the rest of the yeah. way is that this is not right. a scary alien experience. These are, these are friends who we are welcoming to our world. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so, which was a fun counterpoint to what I, you know, actually see happening. Yeah. To, you know, <laughs> to play it as someone who's like, oh, this is great. These, you know, they're, they're here to, to they're here to talk to me. To talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> my cult, my cult is going to rise. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. yeah I, I think uh, sometimes you want to, you want to play it as if like you're as smart as your character and you're going to do the, the, always the correct thing. But, um, sometimes that's not the right choice to make because it's not very interesting. It's, it's, you want to make the interesting decision, you know, maybe bend the character a little bit to make a, a dumb decision that, you know, will be interesting or, um, to move the plot forward because otherwise you're just going to sit there and, and, or you would have all like contain yourself on the ship and, and left or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but that's no fun. We're here. Okay. We're here on the asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're here. Um, alien thing okay well we don't we're not gonna enter it it's uh, too dangerous why would we do that but it's it's really it, it doesn't weigh a lot that's fine that's it's, fine. it's all right that's fine. yeah <laughs> we'll get some mining crews out here yeah um and finally he said uh he just wants to let us know how much he enjoyed the arc thank you uh i love delta green uh mechanics and hope to we return to some sci-fi horror in the future have you had a chance to check out uh, Mothership RPG yet? I haven't played it, but I'm itching to. Funny you mentioned that. Uh, me, Devin, and Matt uh, had a little impromptu off mic Mothership game that I ran because we were uh, we were going to do something on Tuesday and nobody else showed up. So that's right. Uh, I ran one, uh, the intro, like I think it is the intro uh, adventure, um, another bug hunt, the first scenario of it, 
uh, and it was a blast. It was great. I awesome. Yeah. yeah, really fun. If if we hadn't just done Pale Blue Dot, I would have wanted to run a uh, a mothership campaign. Uh, and uh, also, uh, I'm I'm hopefully we'll see how much uh, my uh, ADD gets in the way, but uh, I'm going to try to migrate the Pale Blue Dot into a mothership adventure. So oh. hopefully I can have something for other people to play in Mothership that's kind of based. They're going to be, have the same uh, dust mechanics and the Choctaw and some of that stuff. It'll be a little bit different, but uh, yeah, within Mothership, I think. Like a little cool. anthology yeah. uh, series. That would be fun. Yeah. I would lo- I would love to revisit. I mean, we just talked about, you know, uh, if, you know, the bacteria lands uh, aboard Arthur Kai's body in the Amazon. Yeah. Stuff like that where, oh, yeah. you know, th- all over the world, maybe you start finding these pockets and different, you know, and a team is sent um, or even, you know, we go to the International Space Station yep. to investigate a mystery or the moon base. Mm-hmm. Or, it, there, it's just, it's it's already just rich with yeah. with ideas for, for, for fun games. Yeah, for sure. But that's it. That's all the questions we got. Uh, we, I thank everybody who sent their their kind words and and, and the questions. They were great. Uh, thank you guys for being amazing players. And and uh, uh, hopefully you guys didn't have too many nightmares. From are you, are you, have you gotten over it yet, Matt? Uh, yes. You still... uh, there's I well listening to the to the uh, to the finale. Yeah. Uh, the other day, you know, I a little PTSD. Yeah, yeah, didn't sleep super great. Had a little <laughs> bit of anxiety that night. Uh, but you know, now uh, I think I'm. I think I'm good. Yep. I got some nice heavy indicas, so I'm just <laughs> yeah. sticking with those and just, you know, just out. And the the rap is a nice sort of like you know turn the lights on after the scary movie. Yeah. We all agree it was just a game. It didn't really <laughs> happen. You know, none of this stuff is real. Then why um, do I wake to chance of shock tea every morning, Devin? <laughs> why is that still happening? We need to kill Ryan. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he's becoming one. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you guys, and we'll uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. Cool. Thank Bye. you, John. Thanks, Thanks for running the game. Yeah. No problem. Bye. Bye. Peace. Thank you for listening to this episode of Pale Blue Dot. Please spread the word, leave a review, tell a friend, confess listening to Nastagram to a priest. Anything and everything helps. Intro music by Wilhelm Scream. Scores by Adrian Von Ziegler. Check out our page at NastagramRPG.com, where you can find links to all of our socials, as well as information about our other arcs. Stop on by the Nastagram Lounge on Facebook.com and let us know your favorite horror movie trope. That's nasty.